Good evening and welcome to the Moncton Coliseum for Moncton Magic Basketball. I'm Scott Squires, joined alongside by my broadcast partner, David Tingley. And David, uh, if anybody saw the Periscope pregame show that we did earlier, they heard us talk about just how much the Moncton Magic want to win this game tonight. Of course, in a 40-game regular season, they're all important. But this Island Storm team visiting tonight have given the Magic fits. The Island Storm are 4-1 and one against the Moncton Magic, and uh, they look to get another one here tonight. But uh, I would say of any team right now in the league, this Island Storm team is the one that Moncton really wants to get a win against. Yeah, well, there's lots of storylines for this. Moncton's coming in, lost three in a row uh, to the Island Storm, 4-5 to five this year, like you say. They've got to be chomping at the bit to try to get a little bit of a revenge going. But like you said, every game's important. They're right behind them in the standings. They're looking up at a couple teams in Halifax and St. John they want to edge a little bit closer to. And they've got uh, a long stretch here between now and the end of March where they play two and only two away games. And they got to make hay while the sun shines, and this is the time to do it right now, going towards March in the playoffs. Well, I know Coach Salerno, uh, happy with his team on some fronts, but overall, when you look at the record, I know he's not happy with the 500 record at 11 and 11. He's talked about how this team has lost so many close games but he feels good about where the team is. They've made some personnel adjustments, bringing in uh, a couple of guys, Jason Calise and Brent Jennings. But getting Jeremy Williams back tonight is a big deal for this team. And uh, the bottom line is, if they can come out tonight and get a win on home court against the Island Storm, I think that's going to help propel them a long way in the second half. And a nice crowd tonight, and they're on their feet for the start of this tip. And the crowd's juiced. Let's see if the match can get off to a good start and keep them on their feet, and we'll talk a little bit about this revamped starting lineup here for the Magic as we get off to a, a start here with the tip of Denzel Taylor. And he goes up against Jerry and Henry, one of the new additions to this Island Storm team, and we are underway from the Moncton Coliseum. Glad to have you with us. Here we go. Corey Allman also inserted into that starting lineup, a mainstay in the starting five is Terry Thomas. A nice ball movement. Williams underneath had it slapped away, so they had the good set but just couldn't get the finish. Brad States back the other way, kicks it outside to Franklin Session. Jerry and Henry, long at 6'10", gets it over to Session. Session tried to feed it inside to Maxwell. Here comes Terry Thomas now. There's your key matchup right there with Terry Thomas and Devon Maxwell. That's the thing to keep an eye on. We talked about that in the Periscope pregame show too, and that's the, that's the matchup to watch. A couple of real all NBL Canada level guys. Some of the fans still standing. That's a tradition you see sometimes. They won't sit until the first bucket is scored. Well, they're not going to be able to sit yet. Lead pass for Maxwell. Kicks it right back out to Andre Stringer. He was out for a few games. The Island Storm, glad to have him back. Mad Max gets it off to States. Don't know if he meant to. States gets rejected. Maxwell gets it right back. And Maxwell... Underneath the pressure from Williams and Thomas, he'll travel with the ball and turn it over. And Island fans, you're going to be noticing the lack of Chris Johnson in the lineup too. He's he felt uh, he felt a little queasy in pregame, apparently a little sickness, and he's back in the locker room, not out here to start the game, and he's going to miss the whole uh, the whole night. And that's going to be something we'll talk about as a storyline here. Williams wants to sit the crowd down. Usually it's the other way around, but fans still standing, waiting for that first bucket. From the Magic, can it be Anthony Anderson? And there it is, the all-time leading scorer in the NBL says, now you can sit down, fans. And that's why Denzel Taylor's in the lineup. He's, there's two reasons for that. All-NBL Canada, defensive team-level defense, and keeping plays alive offensively. And there goes Terry Thomas, or pardon me, Anthony Anderson at one end, and Anthony Anderson at the other end, providing some defense on Devon Maxwell. So 3 nothing. both teams trying to find their stride in the first couple of minutes here offensively. Denzel Taylor working that ball around. Anthony Anderson was cutting inside, but they go outside to Williams instead. Jeremy Williams in a crowd. Gets pushed there as Henry was right on top of him. Real strong denial here by Island, but Jeremy Williams gets loose and knocks it down. Jeremy Williams for three, and that is what the Moncton Magic can certainly use from number 21 in white, Jeremy Williams. Double Welcome a, back. in the attention. I think this is what the point of the starting lineup with Corey Almond in. Space the floor a little better. Have Al Stewart come off the bench with his defense and uh, and, and lighten things up with his with his uh, quickness offensively. But Corey Almond being in there spaces it better. And Brad states he can be a dangerous player. And he was a late addition to the lineup at the starting lineup as well. Originally it was Torrance Dyke Jr. But apparently a little bit of an illness going around Island. 
he was uh, sat down as well. Williams slashing inside, kicks it out wide open three. Thomas, not quite enough on that one as it goes off the front of the iron. Rebounded there by Maxwell as he grabs the defensive glass. Just three minutes off the clock here. 6-2, Island Storm trailing. This is Jerry and Henry. Denzel Taylor strong defensively on him and he knocks it away from Henry. And he's been a very welcome addition to this Island Storm team. Coach Kim Hendrick couldn't say enough positives about 22 in orange. Coming off a 16 rebound game, a trade with the St. John's Edge where he was averaging about seven and five, but in with a crowded front court there in St. John's and a solid team, he wasn't getting as many minutes probably as he deserved, but I mean, nothing, no shot against him. Like I say, a deep team there. Island had a need for him in the front court and he's gonna play big minutes here. Brad State's corner three, a little bit too strong. Corey Allman flies in to grab that rebound. So still just the 6-2 lead, 8.38 to go in this first quarter. Big matchup, battle of the bridge. These two conference rivals. Look at Williams take it strong against States, went to the left hand, but States did just enough. Stringer, alley-oop, Maxwell couldn't quite get the handle. That would have been pretty, but it comes back the other way. Williams thought about the three. Henry closed the distance quickly. Now Anthony Anderson wide open, maybe too much time as he can't get that shot to drop. And the Magic are getting anything they want from behind the three-point line, but be nice to get a little uh, work inside here with this lineup against uh, Island Storm. I know they're feeling better about their interior defense with the addition of Henry, but that has been where their weakness is, and it'll be nice to see maybe some concerted effort to get the ball into the paint here, <clears throat> do some work down low. Here is Devon Maxwell, 11 seconds on the shot clock. Jerry and Henry, Denzel Taylor on him. Henry just steps back and smooth draining of the jumper there from Jerry and Henry. And that's a shot he can knock down, and Maxwell's, or uh, Denzel Taylor's gotta be on his toes, and be ready to bang down low, but also be able to step out there with him, which he can do. Denzel's quick enough to stay with him out there. Corey Allman trying to get that three ball work, and he had a huge game last time he faced the Island Storm, perhaps one of the reasons that Coach Salerno inserted Corey into the starting lineup. He's out on Andre Stringer now. He does a little give and go with Maxwell. Right back inside to Devon, changes position midair, and gets the bucket. Devon Maxwell's been a bit of a magic killer this year, even in games where he's had, he's had a couple of low-scoring games against them, but he kills them at the on the boards and at the defensive end, getting in Terry Thomas's face. Look at Denzel Taylor now taking it strong to the rim against the defense of Brad States, and Denzel Taylor is going to go to the line. That's a welcome sight. If you're going to see starters minutes with uh, Denzel Taylor, you can't be one-dimensional on the offensive end and just be a guy corralling offensive rebounds and creating second chances, which he excels at. And, you know, let's let's keep doing that. But you got to have some other balance to your offense. So it's good to see Denzel having that confidence to, to drive the ball. Denzel hits the first. Substitution made here by Coach Salerno. Gives Jeremy Williams a bit of a rest. And checking into the game is Brent Jennings. And I'm sure that Coach Salerno realizing that Jeremy Williams probably needs a little bit of time to get his win and get back into game shape. That was almost intercepted by Thomas. But Devon Maxwell picks it up. Now he'll put it on the floor against Terry Thomas. The two 13s come together. <clears throat> Terry's not happy about the call, but that's got to be uh, that's got to be a source of concern there. Terry needs to be moving his feet better, keeping a bigger man in front of him. He should be able to keep Devon with his quickness in front of him. 7-6, Maxwell looking to tie up the game. Misses the first. And behind the scenes, Anthony Anderson over having a chat with Alonzo Wright, one of their officials here this afternoon, or this evening, I should say. You see the different styles so far here with these two teams, the Storm, and that's going to be a push-off on Brent Jennings, and the ball's going to stay here. Yeah, good call by Alonzo. And that's pretty obvious. Now, see the contrasting styles so far. <coughs> the Storm, only one of their seven shots has been a three-pointer. Meanwhile, down here at the other end, the Magic, seven of their ten shots been from beyond the three-point arc so far. It was a big grin on Brad State's face as he went down to the floor and looked up at the official. He knew he was going to get that call. Outlet pass. Corey Allman, great read on the defense. And then Andre Stringer reaches in and commits the foul. Yeah, Corey Allman's, listen, he hasn't had, he's been a little bit up and down with the shot. He's been much more consistent lately, but something that haven't, hasn't wavered all year is his effort on the defensive end. He's been stellar. He's been uh, getting his hand on a lot of balls and uh, keeping his man in front of him. And Coach Salerno's uh, counting on him for his additional minutes here in the starting lineup is to, to, to repeat that on the defensive end, too. So that's the first foul on Stringer. 18 seconds on the shot clock for double-A. Anthony Anderson kicks it to Jennings, who just came into the game. Jennings dishes it inside. Taylor goes up, and he gets met 
very forcefully there by the defense of Session and Maxwell. And again, Devon Maxwell really uh, does a great job keeping guys like Thomas in front of him, but he's always got his head in a swivel and getting in there, uh, rotating over to help deep teammates and, and uh, block shots. And there goes Brent Jennings stepping out and knocking one down, the lefty from the baseline. Smooth stroke from the southpaw, makes it a 9-6 lead for the Moncton Magic. 6.35 to go. Devon Maxwell thought about the shot, steps in a few feet, puts it up, and no problem there. A couple of smooth jump shots, one at one end, and then Devon Maxwell right back the other for the Storm. Now just got to be aware, Maxwell does can mix in a three, but he doesn't shoot him at a high volume. He wants to put that ball on the floor and get to the mid-range, so that shot fake on that three-pointer, maybe stay home a little bit better next time. Jennings again from the other side now hits for the three ball. Brent Jennings, and if he can get it going from outside, that will certainly be a welcome addition for the Magic. Yeah, Jennings is not shy about the three-pointer on in his game, and he knocked it down real easy. Brad States tried to go baseline against the defense of Jennings, and then Taylor was there as well. And Brent struggled a little bit of late. He hasn't had that shot going uh, himself. He's been one of these, uh, he's, he's been in a little bit of a slump, but uh, you know it has talent. He, he's going to shake out of it, and he, a couple of shots here early, promising signs for him as we go to a, go to the uh, scheduled timeout here halfway through the first quarter. 5.57 left to go in quarter number one. It's a 12-8 lead for the Moncton Magic. And again, this Moncton Magic team, you just get the sense, of course, it's only early, but you, you kind of feel the energy and the intensity from the Magic, you know that they've been looking at this game on the schedule for a while. You don't want to look past any opponent, especially with that long road trip that they had up through Ontario. But I'm sure they've had this one circled for a while because they know of any team in the league right now, the one that they've had the most trouble with in terms of getting a win has been the Island Storm. Yeah, and, they've, and the thing that the Magic have hung their hat on in games like this where they've, and again, they've gotten off to a four for 12 start from the field with nine of those 12 shot attempts being from three-point range. When they have these slow starts, where do they lean on? They lean on that second-ranked defense in the league, and they've done so again. Five island turnovers already, and not at eight, pardon me, magic points off those five turnovers. So that's going to be a storyline we got to look at, and that's been something that Island has done better of late is take care of the ball. Uh, even though they've had the six-game losing streak, they've really had that. Their strength is in their backcourt, and they take care of the ball typically very well. They can't keep turning the ball over at this rate. So we're about to see the first action in an Island Storm uniform for their newest addition. That would be number 22, or excuse me, number 24, Chris Anderson from Muskegon, Michigan, attended Louisiana Tech, and uh, recently spent some time in the G League. And I know that we talked about how excited Coach Kendrick was to have Jerry and Henry equally excited to have a pretty big body in Chris Anderson well, in the lineup. You talk about having kind of a prototypical power forward for this league, a guy that's got that's tough and wide, but can also shoot the ball a little bit from the perimeter. So a guy that gives you all the stuff to look for in the NBL. So Anderson seeing his first action. Meanwhile, Stringer stepped back from the baseline. Shot was no good. Rebound goes out of play, and it'll stay. And Denzel Taylor missed a box out there, and Anderson uh, coming in weak side, throwing that big body in there, and a little shock to the system, Denzel Taylor. Didn't see it coming. He's got to get a body on him and push him out of there. Session inbounds, and that shot up and in by Dyke Jr., who just checked into the game as well, number 11 in orange. So back to a two-point game. 12-10, Magic leading. 5.40 to go, quarter number one. Allman from about seven feet. Too short. Yeah, short-armed it a little bit. He was a little more wide open than he thought he was. and Short-armed it. Should have gone to the bank shot probably from that angle. Franklin Session being guarded by Denzel Taylor. Terrell Baines getting ready to check into the game, as is Kemiosi. So... Baines into the contest from the Moncton Magic. Denzel Taylor takes a seat, and Andre Stringer will head to the Island Storm bench, and Kemi Osi checks into the match. Osi averaging 5.5 points per game on the air. Devon Maxwell now has it in his hands. Brent Jennings right in his face, puts a hand up. Maxwell no good. Session was there, but the ball ends up into the hands of Anthony Anderson. Double A gets it to Terry Thomas. Terry kind of lost the handle a little bit, and then it goes out of bounds, so Devon Maxwell... Magic. Loving that. Yeah, that's going to be overturned, I think. That was clearly off the Island Storm foot. But the Magic have got to do a better job with the, with the box ups. They're getting badly out-rebounded to start this game. They got away with one at the other end. Franklin Sessions coming in from the point guard spot, averaging over nine rebounds a game. they got to get a body on everybody at that end. So Terrell Baines 
He's been playing his best basketball of the season as of late, so keep an eye on zero in white. And Corey Allman tried to feed it to him. And then I think there might have been a foul away from the play as to our right, it was a wave well away from the ball, actually. On the other side of the court, Devon Maxwell and Terry Thomas were matched up, and Terry Thomas kind of holding the midsection, and it's still hunched over just to uh, to the right of our broadcast position. And Devon Maxwell looking a little bit frustrated with the call, but whether Terry whether Terry dumbed his way into one there or not, we didn't see it, but Devon's <laughs> trying to explain to Terry what he did. Well, the two 13s <laughs> both have been lucky for their teams so far this year, both players leading their respective teams in scoring. Terry at 21.9 a game for the Magic. Devon Maxwell at 19 even for the Storm. And Baines throws that one away and then puts the hands on his head. He knows it. Yeah, he saw something that Terry Thomas didn't see, but before you let that pass go, got to make sure your partner's on the same page as you. You make a little eye contact there. Kimiosi falls down, gets it to Maxwell, spins around, tries to throw it inside, and that's a missile that goes into the crowd, and luckily it didn't hit anybody <laughs> sitting in those end seats. Yeah, and Torrance Dyke Jr. made a motion there as if he thought that the lob was coming for a dunk there, and that was just a missile right through his hands. And both teams, the first couple of minutes, everything was kind of moving well and very smooth, but it's almost the last four or five minutes, both teams have gotten really out of sync. Yeah, it's a really strange start to this game. Six and a half minutes in, I mean, we got six to one of the turnover edge in favor of the Magic, but they're losing the rebounding battle 11-3, and that's keeping things close. It's just a kind of a bizarre storyline here, and there's a bizarre play right there. And Osi off the miss from Brent Jennings, inbounded it right into the hands of Terrell Baines. Pretty setup from Osi right to have Terrell. Stringer, slow rotation on that ball. That's nowhere near. A great close-up by double A. Forced the miss there from Stringer. Terry Thomas now swings it to Jennings. Pardon and me, Session. And Session comes right back, gets a deflection. Listen, he's uh, he's uh, no doubt, he's he's a he's a threat to be on every kind of all NBL list that you look for this year is Franklin Session. I mean, he, we talked about his rebounding over nine a game from the point guard spot. He averaged over 18 points, defends at a first team level all NBL at that end of the floor too, and that shows why, that deflection with his long arms. Al Stewart now on the floor for the Magic as he sees his first action on the evening. O.C. being guarded there by Jennings, kicks it out to Maxwell, size mismatch there against Al Stewart, but then lost the handle on the ball, and the foul is going to be on Al. And so that's Coach, the first on Al. And Coach Salerno talked in the, in the run-up to these games how they, uh, the matchup problems that that Island tries to get you into by forcing switches. And that was a good example there. They got, even that, we've talked about it before, getting a big guy switched up onto a small guy, even though it's on the perimeter, that's not always an advantage for the smaller guy. And goes to show right there, Franklin Session. Yeah, just, just burned Terrell Baines' baseline. Yeah, he just exploded through the paint, up and in, and a pretty easy bucket there for Franklin Session. Here's Anderson now, Session out on him. Anderson spins away, takes it out, kicks it to Stewart. Stewart will just slow things down. Five seconds on the shot clock. Got to hurry. Baines puts the jumper up hand right in his face. And Baines wanted the call but doesn't get one. And Jennings now after they get the ball right back. And the magic ice cold from the floor right now. Yeah, and that's the shot that Baines has been, uh, has been knocking down here since his addition into the starting lineup five games ago. Not tonight, but that's the shot he's been knocking down. And he can make it consistently if you give him the chance. And Anderson ducks underneath the pressure coming from Jennings. And Jennings goes right over top of him. And Jennings is going to draw the foul. That's the second foul on Brent. So again, just kind of an awkward start in terms of the first two minutes. It looked like it was going to be a fast paced up and down the floor track meet and then it just kind of ground to a halt and both teams kind of got a little bit of rust in the metalworks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's another turnover by Island. Anderson now takes it himself off glass and in and that will help turn over fast break and the bucket by Anthony Anderson. I mean, you're getting outshot 50% to 30% and you're being out rebounded 13-5 but you're leading by four <laughs> thanks to eight turnovers here by the by the storm. Dyke Jr. gets that fortuitous bounce into his hands. Couldn't get the finish. Jennings back the other way. Bounce pass to Anderson. Wide open. Three. No good. And Anderson saying that he got hacked on the arm. And they're going to call Anderson 
for the foul, his first. Anderson on Anderson, yeah, and that's just, it's just a, such an awkward, funny start to this game. I don't know how, it's a, it's a, it's a tough one to call. It's so, it's so, there's no flow to it. Um, and, the, and the stat sheets just reads, uh, it's like a comedy routine right there right now. Well, Jennings out, and Jeremy Williams back in, and, and I can't say for sure, but it's almost like, and I'm not saying it's the reason, but it's almost like when Jeremy Williams checked out is when things for both teams kind of <laughs> seem to get off the rails a little bit. Yep. So we'll see if uh, the albatross himself, Jeremy Williams, and ah, I call him that. nickname comes out. Well, he's got that incredible wingspan, and uh, <laughs> he's back into the game now, 21 in white. Keep an eye on him. He has this knack of being able to get things going for the Magic when he's out there. 18 to 12. It's a six-point Magic lead with 2.15 to go, and Stringer bounces it off the back of the rim. Rebounded there, bounced up to Al Stewart. Al contorts the body and gets it off glass and in, and a nice finish there by Al as he had a couple of defenders coming back on him. That was a tough pass and catch, but Terry executed it to Al, and he was able to finish between, uh, between a couple of trees there off the glass, nice and soft. And now the Islands going to a bigger lineup with both the new addition, Anderson and Henry, in the game. And Kimmy Yossi goes into the lane, and he gets knocked down, grimaces as he gets help to his feet by his teammate, Dyke Jr. It's been a tough start to the game for Yossi, but that was a good, a couple of bad turnovers here, but that was a nice drive. He took the contact well, and he's going to go to the line, try to make this a six-point game. That's the second foul on Al Stewart. Yossi will shoot, averaging 7.6 points a game. So 149 to go. It's a seven-point lead for the Magic. OC looking to make that a little bit closer, and he hits. So Jason Calise now will come into the game, seeing his first action tonight, wearing number two in white. Anthony Anderson will take a breather for the Magic, and Al Stewart will start the offense down the floor, gives it over to Baines. Calise was ice cold their last time out in Cape Breton, but he's been terrific since joining the Magic five games ago. We'll see how he recovers. Terry Thomas, a little floating runner. Not quite strong enough, and Andre Stringer will bring it back up the floor now for the Storm. Stringer into a crowd, loses it. Thomas back the other way. Here's Al again. The spark plug, Al Stewart getting it going with another two. Yeah, one thing you can count on with Al Stewart is effort and speed, and he's been putting and lighting things up, and he can uh, make things happen at both ends of the floor with that lightning quickness. And he has since he's checked in. Tyler Scott, former UPEI Panther, onto the floor now for the Storm as well. He wears two in orange. And he's another guy they're looking for more consistency from. He's had a pretty good rookie season coming fresh out of the AUS right into pro ball. And he's, had some, he's had some games where he's lit it up, and he's had some games where he's been really quiet. And he's one of the ones I know that um, there's the, the entire organization and, and Coach Tim Kendrick is still really high on. They're expecting him. And it's tough when your rookie season right out of – Right out of Canadian college ball to come play pro. And he's had some really good stretches, and he's got a promising future in front of him here in this league. So Andre Stringer at the line after getting fouled by Jason Caliste. So he gets a foul in the first few minutes of his action here. Stringer hits the second. That'll make it a seven-point lead. 22-15, Moncton leading here. Coming up to the final 60 seconds of quarter number one. This is Baines. Anderson out on him. Baines now will cut into the paint, gives it off to Al Stewart. Al feeling it, gives it to Baines instead. Baines tried to spin around, gets it right back, don't know how he got it, and then loses the handle. It's a fire wagon party going on <laughs> down there, and Dyke Jr. back the other way. Just a mess of a first quarter here. Not not completely, not ugly in, in, all, in every sense of the world. Just We're just some wild play and some crazy stats, and it's just been the most interesting quarter that we've called here so far in this building this season, Scott, that's for sure. Yeah, it's it's kind of strange. Again, if you look back to the first 120 seconds, it looked like <laughs> it was going to be about 130 to 100, you know, 29 track meet. But that certainly has uh, ground to a halt in terms of that pace, 22-15. And that one no good from the line from Dyke Jr. So 44.1 to go, Al Stewart who's been great since he's checked into the game and then away from the ball. Looks no, like the got referees, uh, the clock didn't start when the ball came in. The referees blew it did just to make sure the, the time gets right. Thought there might have been something down there in the corner again as Terry Thomas was matched up against Dyke Jr. Terry, whether he's in the middle of the play or away from it, he's been involved tonight, that's for sure. Coach Salerno came all the way up 
to make sure there was a specific play call, see what they're going to here. Probably going to try to make sure they go two for one, get this off before the 24-second mark. 13 on the shot, 32 on the game. Terry Thomas for three. Thomas bangs it off the iron, and it comes down into the hands of Jerry and Henry, who gives it off to Stringer. There's about a three-second differentiation now between shot and game clock. And the lid's really on for Terry, coming out off a game in the, on Cape Breton where he didn't make one from the field. He's 0 for 4 to start. Anderson baseline, scoop shot, no good. Eight seconds to go, shot clock off. Here comes Thomas to Baines. Baines, kind of an awkward looking shot, and Baines gets it to go. And T. Baines is going to go to the line for the and one. And Coach Tim Kendrick's wondering, he got that at this end. How about my guy at the other end? And the referee has come over to explain to him. I think his argument is that the Moncton Magic player bailed out of the way. And, uh, and Anderson was expecting contact and didn't get it. And that's why I went to the floor. But uh, I'm just guessing here, to Coach Tim Kendrick's not accepting that as an acceptable response. But so, the unblemished record of referees not overturning their calls continues. So Baines hits and indeed turns it into a three-point play. So that's the largest lead of the game now for the Moncton Magic. And in spite of everything, they've got a 10-point lead with 4.2 to go. So they got to get something up quickly. Here comes Stringer like he's in the 100-yard dash. Stringer goes to the left hand at the buzzer. And it's no good, much to the delight of the Moncton Magic fans as well as the coach. And Coach Salerno hopped off the bench to give Jeremy Williams a high five, and well, he should. That was a really good job at the last second. Jeremy getting over to bother Stringer there after Stringer was let free to go coast to coast with 4.4 left. So let me put you on the spot here, partner. If you had to sum up that first quarter in one word, what would it be? Uh, Bizarro land. <laughs> We disjointed? Disjointed. Um, yeah, take your pick. I, I mean, I don't get out my thesaurus. I need some I need some better words than the ones that I got on the tip of my tongue. But, I mean, look, the score is a tw it's a 10-point lead for the Magic, and they're shooting 39.1%. They've been out-rebounded 16-9. Uh, to 9. Um, But when you look at 14 bench points out of the 25, which is, which is crazy for a first quarter, 14 bench points, uh, points, 14 points off 10 uh, island turnovers in the first quarter. I mean, that's that's just, just some wild and crazy numbers here. Well, if you look at these two teams statistically up and down, they're very even in so many statistical categories. The Magic averaging 105 points a game. The Island Storm 104 and a half. The Magic shooting 33.1% from three-point range. <laughs> the Island Storm 34 uh, rebounds per game almost identical, 48.3 for the Magic, 47.6 for the Island Storm. And even statistically, other than the scoreboard, both these teams very even up and down for the most part statistically. But again, it's the head-to-head -head on the season where the Storm had the edge four right. games to one. But certainly a good start in the first quarter as well, disjointed or whatever as it was. It's, it's got to be good for the Magic to be up by 10. Well, look, it's, it's, it's what they come back to. They come back to their defense. And on the defensive end, they've forced 10 turnovers um, of, the, uh, of the rebound edge um, that, the, that the Island have. They only have a 3-2 to two offensive rebounding edge, which is typically where the Magic control things. So as, as out-rebounded as they are, it's more uh, they're, they're all those three-point shots that they've missed, that they've thrown up six of the nine that they've missed. Uh, Island's controlling them there. But other than that aspect of the game, Moncton's controlled everything else from a defensive uh, perspective. And that's what you got to lean back on and win games with if you're, you know, in, in, in quarters and games that are uh, disjointed and, and uh, not flowing like that first quarter was. So second quarter underway, Island Storm in the half court, States to Stringer. And back to the starters for Island. And again, those, that starting lineup does not include Chris Johnson. And we'll get into that a little bit here as the second quarter goes on because that's having an impact for sure. Jerry and Henry made a couple of moves, kicks it out. Maxwell from well outside. That's off the mark. And Kalise rebounds and gets it up to Jay Will. Williams puts it on the floor, and Williams got his feet tangled with the defender, I believe, and Williams went tumbling down to the baseline. Jerry and Henry crumpled up as well, but both players up and look to be okay. And that's what Jeremy gets you. I mean, he gives you a little bit of everything. In the half court, he's got the ability to make shots, put the ball on the floor, but he's athletic and big enough to give people problems in the open court, and, and he did just that there on that occasion. And getting back to Chris Johnson, he's one of the big four we talked about 
before this game. The guy, the, one of the guys that scores between 18 and 19 for this team. And he does it in a lot of different ways. He's got not one thing that he does real well. He shoots the ball a little bit from three-point land. He's got that in-between game. He can take you down low and, and finish there as well. And he's a solid defender and rebounder. So he gives a, he's a, one of these all-Canadian, one of the best Canadians in the league. And uh, Island is surely missing that, missing his presence out here tonight. So Jeremy Williams, success from the line, 27-15, largest lead for the Magic. It stands at 12. Franklin Session lobs it all the way over. Maxwell did a good job just to keep it in play. Devon now puts it on the floor, spins around from Taylor, awkwardly goes to the right hand and banks it in. Not sure how he got that shot off, but it worked. Looking for a call was Maxwell, but that was great defense from Denzel Taylor again. But sometimes great offense beats great defense, and that's what happened there. Williams kicks it over to Kaliste. He'll step back from well outside. Jason Kaliste, let's call him Kathrice. <laughs> and he needs no space to get it off. And in that scenario there, Andre Stringer stumbled a little bit coming off the screen. And that's all Kaliste needed to step in confidently and knock it down, which he's done at a 60% clip since his activation here five days ago. Yeah, he is five very games ago, pardon me. He's very comfortable from outside the arc, and he was a good five or six feet behind that line, and it didn't phase him at all. Just a smooth shooting motion. Uh, he's the kind of guy, he's got that in-the-gym range. It's not, all that matters is are his feet set, and they sure were there. So just early on here in this second quarter, it's now a 13-point lead for the Magic. Session, twisting, turning, trying to put Williams on skates and banks it high off the glass. So the Island Storm finding a little luck with the bank shot here. Maybe they can go play some pool after this. Well, they, uh, well that, that scenario, that was, again, really good defense from Jeremy Williams. That's and Kaliste. Kaliste for Kaliste. And he's hot from the outside early. The J, the J in Jason stands for jumper. That's what he's got. When he is feeling it, that's as smooth a stroke as you will see from the floor. Stringer wide open, nobody around him. And Andre Stringer, like he's shooting in the warm up there, and he hits that one no problem at all. Coach Salerno was not happy there. Kalise looked like he stepped in and took a charge, but the Magic seemed to stop playing after that. Got angry about the no call. Didn't bother to close out in the shooter. So Taylor tried to zip that ball inside, and it went off. The Magic player hand out of play, so they'll turn it over. 33-22, 11-point lead for the Magic here. 9-38 and counting in this second quarter. And Stringer's been quiet so far, and that's not a good. So has Session, and that's something that the Magic know. They got an 11-point lead here, but two of the three big guns on the floor for Island have not gotten it going at all. And you know it's kind of a matter of time with those guys. Session's just two for four for four points. Stringer. Baseline tries to get it inside to States, and States is there. Puts the shot up from right underneath the bucket, and he also takes the foul. And if you're a, if you're down low in this league, the guys as big as strong like Brad States down, down low with the ball. If you're gonna get in, get in there and reach, you better either make sure you get a, you get ball, or you get his, don't let his hands get above his shoulders and knock that down. States misses. The chance from the charity stripe, rebounded by Williams. Kalise, well, there he is, wide open. Kalise for three more, and the man is El Fuego. And Al Stewart just didn't even bother walking after that. He knew that that man, once he got it to him wide open, his man Jason Kalise was going to knock it down. Nice ball movement inside. Good defense from Williams and Kalise, and it's Jason Kalise coming up the floor. And Jerry and Henry comes in from behind with the reach in. That was a smart play. And Al Stewart's smiling at Kalise. He, that ball was coming right back to Jason for a 4-3 right there. So smart foul by Henry. Well, there's no question that Kalise right now is feeling the stroke from outside. Let's see if they keep trying to feed him. Al Stewart with that ball now. And here's Do where the, the strength of the Magic come in right now is Al with a great feed and another block from Devon Maxwell. Mad Max. Two men enter, one man leave, and it's, De and it's Devon Maxwell in that scenario. And that's a couple times he's victimized Denzel Taylor off a good feed from Al Stewart that time. So 36-24, 12 points the lead for the Magic. Here's the long, lean Henry trying to lean into Taylor, and he'll travel and turn the ball over. So Henry. 
not crazy about the call. Of course he wouldn't be because it was against him. And he did. Sh he shuffled his feet off of that spin, and I know he's confused about it, but I agree with the call. He shuffled his feet off of that spin. He didn't keep his didn't keep his pivot foot settled. Here's Kalis now over the head to Williams. He'll try his luck from outside. Ball comes down into the hands of Stringer, and he'll bring it back up the floor for the Island Storm. Corey Allman right in his back pocket. Again, quick ball movement moved inside to Henry. He tries to back in Williams. Henry turns, spins from about seven feet and couldn't get the shot to drop. Al Stewart back up the other way into the corner for Corey Allman. Yes! Allman is joyful for three! And there you see the advantage of having two dead-eye shooters on the floor at the same time, and Allman and Kalist. And that's a deadly combination right now for the Magic here in this quarter. And Session trying to zigzag his way through traffic, loses the handle on the ball. And now, for the first time in the game, wearing his Mega Man socks is the <laughs> Ant-Man, Anthony Cox. Ant-Man, looking good. And the game, listen, the, the, of the five games that, they've, that these teams have played so far, there's been one, exactly one blowout. That was the one game the Magic won. And in that game, they were able to limit Franklin Session to a great degree with a a real solid game plan where they basically forced him to shoot from the field. He didn't make, didn't make anything. Um, since then, he has done a fantastic job of, of uh, adjusting to how the Magic have played him and been just electric in these games. And, and tonight so far, they're really doing a job on him. He's, I mean, he's two for four for four points, but he's not the electric presence on the offensive end, creating havoc by getting the lane that he's been doing on a consistent basis this year. So that's really an advantage and one of the reasons that the Magic, you look at the scoreboard and they've stretched this out to a 15-point lead. 39-24 is your score, 7.45 to go in this second quarter. Moncton calls time and we've talked about the three-point shooting. Corey Almond was hot last time out against the Island Storm and Jason Caliste is the three-point bomber tonight. Three of three from outside the arc for nine points. He's the leading scorer for Moncton and the Magic as a team, seven of 14, 450 percent and conversely, on the other side, the Island Storm have only attempted three, or excuse me, six shots from three, and they're only one of six. Yeah, and it was a slow start from the line uh, for the Magic, too. They were one of eight there at one point, or a two, two for eight, so they've hit five of their last six uh, in that respect. So look, I mean, look, when you got Kaliste and you got Allman on the wings, and guys like Jeremy Williams who could support, and Anthony Anderson, obviously, they can knock down threes. Plenty of three-point shooters, but you don't want to lean on that as your first, as your first, uh, as your first look always. I mean, if that if it comes to you, great. But when a guy like Kalis and a guy like Almond gets hot, listen, you go to that well as many times as you can. When you got shooters like that, you make to you, you shoot till you make, you shoot till you miss. Well, and with that outside presence, perhaps as the game wears on, it might soften up the inside of the paint a little bit and allow the Magic to open up a little bit of that interior game. We'll have to wait and see. Meanwhile. Corey Allman says, forget the inside. I'm going all the way downtown from D.C. And that was a great play call out of the timeout. The sign of really good coaching in any league is at the, the first play out of the timeout, you get a good look. And Coach Slinger dialed up a great one there and screens all, all around for Corey Allman. And they got the ball to Anderson wide open in the corner, but he couldn't get the shot to drop. Allman thought about putting up another three, gives it off to the other bomber, Kaliste. He'll dish now to Al Stewart. 13 on the shot clock. Al looking around, gets it to Cox, right back to Al. Stewart with states right on him, decides to put it on the floor. Anderson comes over, great defense, swats it away. Lobs it up to Devon Maxwell, and Kalist gets back with the defense, but then the nice follow from Session to get the two points. Cox back the other way now. Now the pace picks up just a little bit. And as I say that, Al Stewart will bring it back out and get things set in the half court for the Magic. 42-26, 16-point advantage for Moncton. 6.33 to go in the quarter, five on the shot clock. Al put it up, no good, and States right there and grabs the defensive board. Yeah, guys on the weak side got to realize that that shot, that shot clock's going down too and, and crashed uh, crash on, the, on the weak side there. They knew Al had to get it up. Jennings and Anderson getting ready to check back into the contest for Moncton. Meanwhile, O.C. from the outside drains the three ball and gets the storm a little closer. That's a real bonus for Island. O.C. hasn't shot the ball very well from the perimeter this year, and so that's a, a big one for them to creep, creep a little bit closer here in the second quarter. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Al zips it to Williams. Williams thought about the shot, puts it on the floor. 
Lost the handle, spins, gets it to roll around the rim, and in Jay Will with the nice look. All he needs is that little bit of space, and he's got that, got that length and strength to just give you a bump with that shoulder, create a little bit of space to get that jump hook off. Kimmy Osi gives it to Session. Corey Allman closes the defensive gap. Williams came to help out. They get it over to States. They get it to Maxwell. Now he'll try to charge his way in, and great defense there. And Al coast to coast off glass, and in. Two more for the Chicago veteran. And two times with the strip and going the other direction. That quickness, and Corey Allman, I can't say enough about the job he's doing on this pick and roll with Franklin Sessions and being tough. OC wide open, no good, and again, great job getting that rebound. Allman gets it right back. Corey Allman stops, pops off the front of the rim. The team wanted it. Getting rid of the check-in, Jennings and Anderson wanted it. Maxwell scoops it, looking like Dr. J there as he went to the one-hand scoop with that ball. But more really good deep, that is tough. That's a kind of sometimes the hardest situation when you're backpedaling like that against a really talented offensive player, just trying to make the shot real difficult. And that is two or three times now that Jeremy Williams, the albatross with those long arms, has gotten back and bothered a, a, a seemingly easy shot and forced a miss. 4.43 to go in the half. It's a 46-29 lead, 17 points the advantage. Here's Cox. Eight seconds on the shot clock, time winding down. Thomas behind the back. Anderson sticks to him like glue. Anderson pulls his way in, and Terry Thomas, strong off blast. My goodness, vintage Terry Thomas he right there. He would not be denied on that when he went. He had to go to the full array of moves there to free himself for that, uh, for that drive to the hole and a really good finish with the left hand. Session against Almond puts it on the floor, and he's going to... Get the foul committed on him by Corey. I love what Corey's doing here on session. And sessions and session and him are talking. And I think it looks mostly friendly. A little smile from the referees here, but definitely some trash talk back and forth going on. So a couple of UPEI players subbing for one another. Brad States out of the game. Tyler Scott onto the floor for the Island Storm and keep an eye on Scott. He's got some great range from outside. Yeah, you can knock it down from here. Talk about parking lot range with Kalista and Almond, and that's the same thing with Tyler Scott. And Franklin Session now walking away. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll uh, edit it for you, but basically his comment was all that talking, be Zip quiet. It. <laughs> Zip it, he yeah. says to Corey Almond. Yeah, he's got a couple of fouls here, real quick, on Corey. But again, Corey's been doing a great job at him so far. Stuck on four points, two for four. Not even getting any uh, any offense going. And not, not a bad stat line, but he's just not getting any shots up, any opportunities for himself, because Corey's doing such a good job with him off the bounce. He has gotten a couple fouls on him here these last couple possessions. So, good job by the Magic hindering that inbounds. 13 seconds on the shot clock here as Scott Gets it into Session. Almond again right in his ear. And if I know Corey, he's not going to be quiet. No, Session he's not. kicks it out. Anderson gets that jumper to go from about 21 feet. So that'll make Chris Anderson feel a little better and get him a little more comfortable <laughs> into the lineup. Jennings, smooth left hand stroke. And there's Corey. another three. Right. And he looks, he's looking confident tonight, too, which is a good sign. He was, he, like I say, he's been struggling with that shot the last couple games, but. Only a matter of time before he broke out. He's looking real confident tonight. Session puts the shoulder into Corey, steps back. That shot's no good. Kemi Yossi does a good job of getting the rebound. Fresh shot clock for the Storm. Anthony Cox defending on Session, kicks it to Anderson. Anderson puts the hip into Thomas. Had it knocked away, and here comes Jennings. Could be showtime here, Jennings! And he can't get the jam. He missed time. It gets it back. And a great job by Terry Thomas. <laughs> and the player is able to laugh about it. I was getting ready for the big jam call. And Brent Jennings, I think he had too much time to think about it. But little, the important thing is they got the bucket. A little performance anxiety there from Jennings. He had Terry in his ear. I think he was telling, I think Terry was telling him what dunk to do. And it got him a little confused as he, as he rose up for the shot. But listen, when it's a two on oh, you might get those opportunities and look. I am, unbelie I, my, I am unbelievably impressed with the intensity level from the Moncton Magic here at this defensive end. They are fired up. There's a lot of talking going on between these teams, and the Magic are turning all that talk and all that energy into positive vibes here on the defensive end. It's turning into offense. And sometimes it's the little things that 
really make a big difference. And Terry Thomas is truly turning into a leader on this team. It would have been really easy for Terry Thomas on that missed dunk from Jennings just to pick up the loose ball, nobody around him, and put it in himself. What does he do? Boxed out. And he gave it right back to Brent, who got the put back. For his fifth, ass a fifth assist of the game. And when you talk about a guy, look, he's... So there you see watching, the miss. We're watching the replay. And there's Terry. Terry he, comes in, no, grabs the ball. No, you take it away there, Brent. There you go. So look, Terry, we're now going on a game and a half almost here for Terry without a made shot. When you're talking about a guy who's an MVP candidate, one of the top five leading scorers in the league, the, the presumed star of this team, to be playing this hard, hard-nosed, not letting that lack of offense right now get to him, it's a good sign. you got to love guys like that. Going to give their 100% no matter what their uh, what the num whether the no matter their, their their numbers next to them in the offensive box score. A 22-point lead, Franklin Session for the Storm. They've got to do something to try and chip away at this lead going into the half. Session doing all he can gets his own rebound. Look at Franklin Session, but Anthony Cox with the brick wall defense. Almond gives it to Terry. Terry digs that pivot foot in, gives it off to Corey Almond. They'll work it to Anderson. 13 on the shot clock. Cox runs a little screen there. More of a pick as he kind of pushes Devon Maxwell out of the way. And then Anthony gets it himself. Tried to go to the right-hand hook shot. Maxwell, good defense. Terry back the other way and off. Glass and in. So good follow. Nice finish from Terry Thomas. And pardon me, that's his second shot. He did get off the snide there earlier in this quarter with that nice left-handed layup. And he gets another one going other way. You know how well he can finish with both hands. Dyke, Dyke Jr. now steps back, puts it up. And the storm, pretty chilly from the floor right now for the Island Storm. They're going to have to start hitting some of these shots to start getting back into this one. Again, only the first half, but you don't want to get too far behind. Osi trying to get Thomas into the air, and Thomas wouldn't bite. Yes. And Thomas loves the defense. You know, things are going well when that primal scream from Terry comes out. And normally it's when something good happens on the offensive end. One of his teammates makes a big shot or there's a big dunk, but the the defense tonight is the thing that, that's getting these guys and this fans fired up. It's 31 points. That's all that's on the board here so far for the Storm with 1.54 to go in the first half. So Coach Joe Salerno calls time. A very comfortable and confident looking Moncton Magic team here. And again, they faced, you know, some travel woes, some tough games, that epic double overtime game against the London Lightning. Then all the travel back to the Maritimes, the trip up to Cape Breton. A lackluster start against the Highlanders, losing the final game of that road trip. So they kind of had the full meal deal of emotion on that road trip. But I think, and again, we still got to have to go and never, ever count out a Tim Kendrick coach team. And we won't do that with the Island Storm. But right now, with 1.54 to go, a hungry-looking Magic team. Well, listen, they had, the, Coach Salerno could have, if he'd wanted to after that Highlanders game, made a lot of excuses. You know, we were a little bit banged up. You know, there's, we got six guys in treatment, which I know they did have before that game. Uh, a little bit banged up, long road trip. We traveled all the way from Ontario to Cape Breton for the last game of the road trip. Uh, we got off to a poor start shooting the ball. There could have been a long list of excuses, and he could have dismissed it. And I asked him directly for our pregame story. Um, you know, look, how do you feel? No excuses. We were terrible. We didn't, <laughs> we didn't, we didn't hustle enough to stay with a, a quality team in this league, and the Cape Breton Highlanders forget their record at 7-11 they are a quality team there is there was no excuses and you had to think that he got in the ear of this squad in the last couple game in the last couple days leading up to this game with a team they've they're one and four against uh let's put in a better effort and they certainly are tonight this is just uh domination on the defensive end of the floor in this quarter 55 31 as we get back underway here in the second quarter 143 to go in it and the half Kaliste, who's been hot from outside, dishes to Anderson. Thunk thinks about getting it to Baines and does. Baines, baseline, shakes off the defender, gets it to Anthony. Anthony, no good from outside the arc. Nice job getting that rebound by Tyler Scott. He gets it to Osi. Kemi Osi. Got Jennings to commit, dishes off to Session. 13 on the shot clock, 120 in the half. And another turnover. Here comes Jennings. Gives it off inside for Thomas and Terry Thomas off glass. The nice dish from Jennings inside and 13 in white with the finish. Um, and more physical and solid defense from Terry Thomas. Just got his, he just slid very well with Franklin Session. Knew where he wanted to go, got his body in front of him and 
force a missed dribble from Frank on session. Tyler Scott, we talked about him from outside, and a beautiful stroke there from three-point range gets the tray for the Storm. And if there's someone in the league with a prettier-looking jump shot than Tyler Scott, I'd like to know who that is. Well, he showed that his entire career at UPEI is now Anthony Anderson back the other way, gets the basket, and he'll go to the line to shoot one. And just another, we barely said Anthony Anderson's name this entire game, Scott. And you look at the box score, and he's got nine points and four assists and a, and a three. It's just, you just it's so solid with Anthony over and over and over again. You almost forget about him with the, with the uh, explosiveness around him. And that's saying something. He got the, the, the all-time league leading score, and he's up into double figures, joining Brent Jennings with 10 to lead the Magic here. And it's 60-34. 44 seconds left as Ossie picks it up. Anderson now three of four for the, from the line to go toward those 10 points, and Ossie falls down, somehow gets it to Stringer. Stringer with Thomas on him, takes it into the paint, floats it in, and that will drop in as Ossie just was there to tap it just in case. Final 30 seconds. Anderson and Devon right. Maxwell goes crashing into the timekeeper's table. Everybody okay, smiles all around. Devon gives Anthony a little tap, and Anthony helping tidy things up there at the well, scorer's table. Possession arrow might have took the charge on that one. And that uh, move by Stringer, that just show, goes to show what a threat. He hasn't made anything all night, but that goes to show what a threat his three-point shot is. He's still got Terry Thomas off his feet to commit and uh, skated easily into the lane for that finger roll. The Moncton Magic have scored 35 points, and there's a turnover. Dyke Jr. all the way with the left-handed jam, 11 in orange. He'll take that all night long. Kalise now back the other way. Too strong, bounces off the iron. Here's a chance for a bit of a run late in the half. Dyke Jr., who just had that big slam, gives it off to Mad Max. Maxwell there gets the putback. Ooh, and and Maxwell goes down, down hard. and you could hear the thump from over here, and Devon Think Maxwell. He's okay, thankfully, but that looked, looked worse than it was. So point eight to go, and four points in very short order by the Island Storm. Yeah, 60 that. to 40, and the time expires, and as I was just talking about, the 35 points that Moncton had put up in the quarter, an uncharacteristic turnover led to the big jam from Dyke. And then again, some good ball movement and Devon Maxwell with the do so. A quick little 4-0 run to end the quarter. But it's still a 20-point lead, 60 to 40 for the Moncton Magic as we now will head into halftime. Yeah, and an ugly finish to that half for the Magic gives uh, Coach Salerno and the rest of the staff something to get on the Magic about after a mostly terrific opening. Uh, opening uh, half to this game with uh, with the we talked about it that that intensity level at the defensive end of the floor for the Magic was kind of a step above what we've seen from this uh, uh, from this team. Not that they haven't played great defense. We talked about them being the second ranked defensive team, but they just seem to have a little bit of extra motivation there behind them tonight, maybe. Well. Top scorers for the Island Storm in that first half. Devon Maxwell with eight. Franklin Session and Andre Stringer with six each. And then Kemi Osi with five for the Moncton Magic leading the way. Brent Jennings and Anthony Anderson both in double digits with ten points. Jason Caliste on the strength of those three three-pointers with nine. And Jeremy Williams seeing his first game after being out for a few games with injury chipped in with seven. And when you add it all up, it's a 60-40 to 40 lead for the Moncton Magic over the Island Storm. And we are going to step aside, take a break, second half action in just a little over 13 minutes. Scott Squires, Dave Tingley will be back with the second half from the Coliseum.
Just about set to go here for the second half between the Moncton Magic and the Island Storm. Pretty good half for the home side as they lead 60 to 40. We should also, I don't think we mentioned our officials off the top. We've talked about them throughout the game, but Matt Boyle, Brett Stalker, and Alonzo Wright are the three officials working this game this evening. And by all accounts, they've done a good job. So far, so good, yeah. So no, we, we, they, they, these, uh, we've seen these guys a lot. This team's a common one here in Moncton, these three officials. And, um, yeah, nobody gets every call right, but I don't think, uh, I don't think the referee, I don't think the refereeing has had much impact on the scoreboard so far this game, shall we say, Scott. That's been, that's been the result of the Moncton Magic on the defensive end of the floor. So a very good second quarter indeed for the Moncton Magic, but kind of a topsy-turvy final couple of seconds as the Island Storm were able to put four points on the board within the last 20 or 21 seconds yeah. of that half to close it. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but from where they were to where they could have been, 26-28 down, to be down 20, if they can get a little run going here to start this third quarter, we'll have a whole new ball game. So, yeah, you said it just off the top here when we sat down and talked. The first few minutes are going to be really key here for the Magic, and they've got to maintain this intensity that's dictated how this game's gone on the defensive end of the floor and keep doing that job on guys like Session and Andre Stringer. Well, you know that first order of business for the Island Storm will be to get it inside double digits. Stringer from well downtown, hand right in his face, and Andre Stringer with Corey Almond right on his forehead hits the tray. Yeah, he didn't get many opportunities. He didn't shoot the ball poorly in the first half, kind of like, a lot like uh, like uh, Franklin Session. Didn't necessarily shoot the ball ter uh, terribly, just didn't have a lot of opportunities. They were just on lockdown from the Magic. Allman, double team defense, defense there, gets it to Taylor. Denzel Taylor, and Jerry and Henry right over top of him. And this is a league of runs, and right now, you know the Island Storm are thinking, come out here in this third quarter with some energy and put a little run together. Yeah, you read my mind, and that is... <laughs> and I think you heard two players on the floor <laughs> and the coach, Tim Kendrick, all say he didn't touch them. Now, I stopped talking, fans, to hopefully you give you guys the, uh, the benefit of the audio here from down low on the floor, as Coach Kendrick is calling it better than I could. But in any event, he is, does not feel like Jerry and Henry had made any contact before that uh, foul was called, and we didn't see it well enough over here, I don't think, to make a judgment on that, but he seems pretty sure of himself, and I've never known Coach Kendrick to overreact to much. Four seconds on the shot clock, Almond with the long right-hand floater. No good, and now the Island Storm bring it back up. Only three points scored so far in the first minute and a half. Tried to get inside to Maxwell. Nice defense by Denzel well Taylor. By Taylor, yeah. Here comes Thomas now, almost turns it over, gets it back. Gives it to Anderson, kick out for Williams. Off the front of the iron, Taylor there. But it comes down to Jerry and Henry, and he'll now bring it up the floor. And that matchup on the boards of Jerry and Henry and Denzel Taylor is gonna be something to watch here in the second half. Nice ball movement to the perimeter. Stringer puts it on the floor, zips at the States, wide open, Brad States. Couldn't find the range, but again, Aggressively, the Storm get the rebound. Stringer puts the jump shot up. Jerry and Henry with the rebound. Right back out to Stringer. And right now, the Island Storm are carrying the play. Dish inside and another look there. And Stringer gets the bucket. Coach Kendrick likes it. And now, the Island Storm are putting some pressure here on the Magic early in this third quarter. And you saw there Jerry and Henry keeping, uh, making two extra chances there for the Island at that end. And Corey Allman points. steps back, Session steps right into him. So a good job by Corey to fake the shot, get the defender Session to commit. And once Session was in the air, well, then it was just up to Corey to kind of step into him. <laughs> and the running conversation between Corey Allman and Frank Session continues into this half. And all Corey, Corey didn't have much to say. He just had a look. And then Frank had something to say, and Corey had a bit of a smile there. So I think it's competitors going at each other more than more than it being having a nasty edge right now. A couple of good competitors 
going at each other on both ends of the floor. And just to the left, probably off screen, Jeremy Williams was over on the sideline, and the veteran Al Stewart was up having a bit of a pep talk with him, gave him a slap on the backside and said, let's get it going. So there's Al Stewart being that veteran, adding to this team from many different ways. Here's Henry now. Look at Henry, a big man with the moves, gets it to Skates, and Brad Skates hits the eight-foot jump shot, and all of a sudden, the lead now down to 14. And Henry's causing problems in there when he puts that ball on the floor a little bit with that length. He's creating space for uh, for some ball movement, and he's keeping balls alive and creating second chances for Island. And Corey Allman is going to turn it over, and not a great start to this third quarter for the Moncton Magic, who have seen that 20-point lead that they. Well, actually, if you go back to the last few seconds of the second quarter, 24-point lead, yeah. 24 now down to 14. So a 10-point swing, 61-47. Island Storm with some energy here to start this second half. Franklin yeah. Session. And Henry only on the floor, on the board with two points, but eight rebounds for him. Session throws the head back, trying to draw a foul, perhaps goes strong into the basket. And he will get the foul inside as Denzel Taylor guilty. So that'll put Frank Session on the line. And not often that you see Denzel Taylor having struggles with somebody else on the offensive or defensive glass. He's usually the guy that's causing problems down there for the opposition. But tonight, only three boards in his minutes compared with eight for Jaron Henry. So he's really, he's really losing that battle here. That's why I pointed to that as something to keep an eye on here for this second half as Session gets one out of two to go and makes the lead 13, 61-48 with 8.22 clock running the third quarter. Well, you know, again, it's that psychological barrier, but if the Island Storm can get this inside double digits, it is on. Here's Thomas now, working hard, steps back, puts the shot up, Terry Thomas, money right there. Good look from number 13 in white, Terry Thomas. And that's a tough one over top. You got Henry on the switch, and that would make it have a quickness advantage, but he managed to get that jump shot up over top of Henry. And a defensive lapse here on the other end. Brad State snuck inside for an easy layup. And yeah, Brad State's getting his name on the score sheet a few times here in this third quarter. Jennings now, left-handed stroke. Beautiful tray from Brent Jennings. And he's five for eight on the game from, uh, from the field. Three for three from the three-point line for 13 big points. And Brent Jennings really bringing a lift off the bench for these Magic. Maxwell. In a sea of magic players, State's got a couple of looks at the rebound. And here's Jennings. Can he get it this time? Jennings! Boom! Shakalaka for Brent Jennings. And no mistake on the second. It did have Terry Thomas in his ear telling him which junk to throw down. Just went to that power two-hander and made sure of it this time. And you know that Brent Jennings had it in the back of his mind. That is not happening again. What happened the first time he was wide open. Trying to feed Jen, trying to feed States inside. Here's Corey Allman now. Thomas calling for it, but Allman steps from three, <laughs> and he's calling back to D.C. saying, hey, did you see what the sniper just did? And that was that for confidence, and his team had no hesitation either. The bench hopped up and said, pop that, Corey. And now on the strength of a couple of threes and a big jam, the lead back to 21. And <laughs> Denzel Taylor does a good job of getting position underneath the basket and getting that rebound. Uh, this game continues just to be kind of a strange one. A little one of runs. We talked to uh, Coach Tim Kendrick before the game about the, this league being a league of runs. You asked him that question, and it uh, proves itself time after time after time in this league. It leads to 24, back to 10, blink of an eye, it's back to 21. Well, all I can tell you is if you're at a game in the arena physically watching, never leave early. And if you're watching a live stream, never turn it off early because 20 or 25 point leads don't mean anything. Dyke Jr. gets it to Session, gives it off to Stringer. Stringer puts it on the floor, gives it to Anderson. 11 on the shot. Here's Session. Dips it inside. And Devon Maxwell just powers his way to the bucket, hangs off the rim and gets the deuce. Thunderdome for Max on the slam, and you can't you can't guess with Max. You got to know that if you're gonna if you're gonna go for that steal, you better get it. Brent Jennings again for three. Brent Jennings is feeling the triple mojo. The lefty is feeling it from beyond the arc. He's up to four for four, and Anthony Anderson just does such a good job getting into that lane, contorting his body 
just knowing that Brent is, Brent's going to be there waiting for him. Maxwell, nice scoop underhanded inside to Chris Anderson. Anderson gets the bucket and a turnover. Now Dyke Jr. gives it to Maxwell. Kicks it to Session. Fakes the shot, gets it to Dyke Jr. Almost turned it over, but it comes right back to Dyke Jr. Long pass over for Anderson. And the two Andersons come together. One Mr. Anderson to another. You can't say enough good things about Devon Maxwell. I mean, the stuff that, the things that he brings to this squad on both ends of the floor, you can't overvalue. I mean, his, his toughness, his hustle, his intensity, and his ability to finish at the rim and to create shots for his, uh, for his teammates with his penetration at the same time. It's just invaluable. He's just a perfect player this, for this league, and, and he's uh, one of the best players in it. So media timeout here with 5.16 to go. 74-54, 20-point advantage for the Magic. The Island Storm came out and had a bit of a run in the first couple minutes, but the Magic settled it down and got a couple of big threes. The monster jam from Brent Jennings, leading scorer for the Island Storm. Andre Stringer with 11, Devon Maxwell with 10. And for the Moncton Magic, Brent Jennings on the strength of four for four from three-point land has 18 points, leading all scorers in the contest. Corey Allman and Anthony Anderson with 10 apiece for the Magic. Well, we talked about in the pregame, I don't know if we've mentioned it on air, but I mean, the Island have come into this game almost negative 100 on the season as far as bench scoring goes. Um, they've been outscored. Um, they're, they're benched by over by almost 100 points, and that game, that uh, that uh, trend is continued into this matchup. As as right now, the Magic lead in that category, 38-16, off the strength of, as you said, Brent Jennings, uh, but also Jason Kalise with his three threes, and Al Stewart with uh, with six on three for five from the floor. So, I mean, these uh, the Magic. That's what when they're when they're at their best, they're running at you in waves with these guys that can come at you from all angles, doing all sorts of things whether it's the starting five or the guys off the bench. Well, the Magic as a team on the season shooting just over 33% from three-point line. This game, 12 of 24 for 50. So if you can put up that many shots from outside the arc and be hitting 50%, you're probably going to have a 20-point lead with 5.16 to go in the third quarter. And what's great, too, after being heavy on three-pointers early, it's only they, they've... Uh, it's gone back over 50% for two-point shots for the Magic here since then. So 54 shots overall, of which they've made half. Only 24 of them, I say only 24, only 24 of them from three, but that was heavy early. And right now, I think they're doing a better job of penetrating and taking that three when it's open off a kickout instead of looking at it for the first option. So Anthony Anderson defending on Stringer gets the foul. That's his second. Stringer steps back for three, and it goes off the back of the rim and in. So Andre Stringer hits that ball from outside. So that will help. You give him the width of a piece of paper, he's going to get off that three, and he's going to drain it. That guy is just deadly, and he hasn't got many opportunities today, but he's starting to heat up. Anthony Anderson tried to feed it inside to Cox. Good defense there, but he gets it right back. Anderson behind the back. Bounce pass to Anthony Cox and Anderson there. And I think Chris Anderson, even though he's pleading his case, he will get the foul. And Al Stewart now will check into the contest for the Magic. That, that was a physical matchup there with uh, Session and Anderson. That And uh, Anthony just, the, the Magic just seemed to be winning those hustle plays. And not that the Island aren't playing hard. But those, those, those hustle plays, the intensity of uh, maybe this home matchup after being on the road and, and being a little, little more geeked up maybe. The Magic seem to be winning a few more of those 50-50 balls. And uh, Coach Kendrick, I think, wanted a little bit of a bump on Anthony as he went after session there. But Anthony won the ball, and Anthony Cox now at the line looking for two for two, and he makes it. Well, Mega Man gets two from the charity stripe, 76-57. Frank Session takes a quick peek up at the score clock. Stringer now with Anderson defending on him. Stringer, quick zip inside. Good defense again. Here comes Al Stewart for Thomas. Tried to scoop it to Jennings. Jennings will get it back and puts it up for three. Too strong. Franklin Session there. He grabs the rebound. 4.20 to go. Lobs it in for Dyke Jr. And all in one motion. Dyke Jr., a good job to take that lob pass in the air and put it off glass and in all in one fluid motion. Franklin Session is just a one-man fast break when he gets that defensive rebound. He's got his head up all the time. He's got that height to see over the defense. Al Stewart for Thomas. Thomas outside for three. 
Not enough juice on that one as it falls just a little short. Here's Session again with another rebound. 3.50 to go in the third quarter. It's a 17-point lead for the Magic. Chris Anderson, nobody around him, puts up the shot. That's nowhere where he wanted it to be, and back come the Magic. Jason Calise now checks in at the scorer's table. He'll come back into the game shortly. Brent Jennings again, the southpaw for three more for Jennings. He missed his last one, though. Didn't shake his confidence and didn't shake Anthony Anderson's confidence in him. He found him wide open, feet set, bang. Well, the Southern Polytechnic State running Hornet hot from outside. And they're going to call Al Stewart. <laughs> Al Stewart kind of has a shy, wry grin as that foul called on him. Fans don't like it, but listen, uh, Session had a straight line to the basket, and Al's feet weren't set, got his hands in there a little bit. Looks like a good call to me. So Jason Caliste into the game. Anthony Anderson will take a, re a rest. I'm sure it'll be a brief one for double A. 16 on the shot clock for the Storm. Maxwell, the strong man, goes to the right hand, and there's the big putback from the new guy, Chris Anderson. He came from nowhere, crashing that weak side and hammered it down. Al Stewart now, OC out on him. Cox a bit of a pick. Jennings wide open again. Can he hit? Brent Jennings looks right at his coach and says, how do you like that, coach? And listen, that's a, that's a problem for Island. You can't leave a guy that's made six threes out there with all that time. That's definitely a miscommunication on Island's part. Great ball movement again. Corner three for Dyke Jr. And off the quick zip pass from Devon Maxwell, Dyke Jr. finds the comfort zone in the corner and hits the tray. And that's the difference on the defensive side tonight. That one you can accept. A, a kick of three passes quick swing, and a three, that one you can accept. A wide open three from a guy who's already made six after one simple pick and roll that the Magic got last time, that is not acceptable. Al Stewart gives it to Jennings. You know what he wants to do. Tries to get the shot in from inside the line. It was contested. Jennings down, ball up court. Maxwell strong, and Maxwell hanging off the rim. Gets another monstrous <laughs> jam. My goodness, Devon Maxwell. He's Mad Max, and he brought the storm there for the Island Storm. Thunderdome again. Max just killing the rim. My goodness. Send the family of that rim some flowers. He may be on the road team, but he is putting on a show for the Moncton Magic fans. You might be cheering for the Magic, but it's fun to watch a guy like that play. And Brent Jennings saying that he got hacked on the arm. Well, that's what you call your basic heat check from BJ. 82-66, 16 point lead, here's O.C. Gets Jennings to commit, and O.C. goes to the floor, and Tim Kendrick, looking, looking, pleading, puts the hands on the head and says, what? And I think that is a, and look, I think it's a good no call on the shot, okay? Jennings did get in the air, but I think O.C. really had to jump quite a ways forward. And that's a, that's a, a rule I have a lot of problems with in any league, and look, there's another, and there's a jumper. Anderson showing his usefulness in a lot of ways with that follow jam earlier, and then that jumper, smooth looking from the perimeter. So back to 14 now are the Storm. Anderson feeling more comfortable here in his first game with the Island Storm. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Terry Thomas being watched by Maxwell. Session now comes over to help out the double team. And they're going to call the foul on Devon Maxwell. And they're going to call it on the dribble, not on the shot. But listen, we talked about the game of runs, and look, the Storm have got to, got to concern themselves with how their run gets them within 14 points and not closer than that. But look, you, you got to be happy. And you talked about it yourself many times, that barrier, that mental barrier of getting to within 10. And if they can do that here towards the end of the third quarter, start of the fourth, but Terry Thomas says, no way. Terry, Back to 16 and one. Terry Thomas, and he had the defender literally right in his chest, and he is a big, strong man, and he just stepped back, put the shot up, and as you said, he will go to the line now to try to complete and a the three-point play. And a big exhale from him. That's the first time a shot's gone down for him from outside the key in all, about seven quarters. 85-68, and both coaches 
getting into it from their sidelines now. The intensity picks up, the energy picks up, as we now only have just a little over a minute to go in the third quarter. Session. And away from the play, Al Stewart and Devon Maxwell kind of hooked up, and they're going to call the foul on Al Stewart. I think that's his third. It is, and that's the kind of matchups fourth that... Naked. Fourth for Al, yeah, and that's the kind of matchups that Island wants, you get, wants to get you into with a bigger guy and a smaller guy, and whether it's on the perimeter or down low, whatever, wherever they can find that advantage, they're going to take it. And they got Devon Maxwell with Al Stewart in his back, and two-time Defensive Player of the Year or nah, not, you don't want that. So Al Stewart will take a seat, and Marquise Clayton checks into the game for the first yep. time. And on the inbounds, they're going to call the turnover. So the Island Storm here with 57.4 to go get a chance to control. Here's Maxwell stepping away. Devon Maxwell and the putback there. Tyler Scott, good job underneath as he just got the little tap in. And now it's a 15-point game. Yeah, and you got it. The Magic are struggling getting their body on the box out here. The counterpart from the island. Marquise Clayton, nice bounce pass inside to Cox. Cox spins away. Quick dish to Thomas from outside. Session grabs the rebound, and back the other way come the island storm. Anderson to Session. Marquise Clayton defending on him. Session inside to Maxwell, and Maxwell can't get it. Gets his own rebound, can't get it to go. Tough sequence there for Devon Maxwell. And Marquise Clayton now, the two former Atlantic University sports standouts. Clayton, a former Husky. Tyler Scott, a former Panther. And Clayton from well downtown, no good. Yeah, and Tyler it. Scott gets the rebound, and time expires. Yeah, that was a questionable look with the clock running down. Had a few more seconds. And Marquise Clayton, though, coming off, and I've been a little bit surprised that this is the first time we've seen him coming off his 19-point outing down in the Highlanders with uh, down in Cape Breton against the Highlanders, uh, kind of a breakout performance for him. But uh, Coach Slerner obviously liking the matchup more with a uh, different guard rotation tonight. But I think the story of that third quarter is the Magic managing to make a run to push the lead back out, but the Storm just reeling them back in each time and making this a game where, you know, you get back, you, you let a team hang around like this a little bit, and you have that kind of a quarter where you had them where you want them with the defensive intensity and, and getting turnovers and forcing bad shots. And then all of a sudden you give up four or six quick ones at the end of the half and then a 30-point third quarter. And all of a sudden you've got yourself in a game where you've got to be concerned about how this fourth quarter is going to go. Well, if you like to look into trends and you're a numerologist, the Island Storm have gotten better points-wise each quarter, 15 in the first, 25 in the second. And as you mentioned, 30 in the third quarter. Any any numer professional numerologists up there, hit us on Twitter. I'm Hoops Tingley, you're Joe Sko, and let us know what that means for the fourth quarter. So I'm just, I'm just trying to help you out. I, I like your angle here for the numerologist. I, I sometimes numbers and numerology can just completely blow my mind. Yeah, is, uh, is Venus in the, th I, don't, I don't even know where to go with that. Well, then again, those pictures that you stare at for a long time and then you finally <laughs> see something, they blow my mind too, so yeah. I'm not sure what that says. <laughs> So 85-70 is your score as we take a look at some of the highlights. But again, a 30-25 to 25 advantage for the Island Storm in that third quarter. Now, they came out at the start of the third quarter, did the storm. They put a push on. They got back into the rhythm. The Island Storm put the pressure on. The Magic, as you said, they weathered it. So now the secret will be for the Magic. They are typically a very good fourth quarter team. So they're going to want to come out and not let the beginning of the fourth quarter go like it did at the beginning of the third quarter where the Island Storm came out and made a bit of a push. Yeah, and I'm a little surprised here. We haven't seen more of Jerry and Henry in his limited minutes. He's had eight boards. He's really given Denzel Taylor fits down low uh, with missed box outs. And, and uh, I'll be interesting to see if they come back to him as part of this fourth quarter lineup if they start making a push. Well, eight rebounds in his limited minutes tied for the team lead with Brad States and Franklin Session, both doing the job on the boards with eight apiece. Yeah. Session had that one go up and over. Good job by Denzel Taylor to grab that rebound. Gets it into the hands of Marquise Clayton. Here's yeah. Clayton stepping back now, slowing it down. And that's the type of shot you expect Franklin Session to make every time. Not sure what bothered him there. Marquise Clayton. That one falls short. And the rebound goes into the hands of Kemiosi. 
And he'll bring it up the floor for the Island Storm, looking to chip into this 15-point lead. Maxwell directing traffic like a crossing guard, gives it to Osi. That shot was off the mark. Here comes Brent Jennings. Jennings has been out hot from outside, but gives it to Corey Allman. And right there is Denzel Taylor. This team leads the NBL in offensive rebound, and there is a couple more and a deuce for Denzel Taylor. And the Canadian, Denzel Taylor, doing yeoman's work down low, as he loves to do. He doesn't mind getting his, getting his elbows dirty, and he does a good job there, creating another opportunity for himself off that first miss and got the roll. Franklin Session. Palms it, goes to the right hand, scooped it up underneath, and he goes down to the floor. 10.54 left to play in the fourth quarter. It's a 17-point lead for the Magic, 87-70, and Session will go to the line, and that's the fourth foul on Denzel Taylor. And only seven points for Session, and he's stuck there again as that first one misses. Yeah, that's a... Big accomplishment for the Magic. Franklin Session, the second leading scorer on this Island Storm team at 18.8 points a game, just behind Devon Maxwell's 19 a game. Denzel Taylor now trying to call traffic. Marquise Clayton goes to the left hand, and a nice play there by Clayton as he took that dish yeah. inside. Saw Session coming over defensively and went to the left hand to get the ball in. And a pretty set play and not something you expect if you're an Island Storm. You're not going to drop a lot of Denzel Taylor to, to Marquise Clayton back doors on the game plan, but there it was. And now Marquise is stuck down low. Big size mismatch there, and Devon Maxwell takes advantage of it. And the Magic got to realize that in the moment. If that gets stuck like that, they got to send somebody fast to get the ball out of... Devon Maxwell's hands. Marquise Clayton now with the ball in his hands. Gets it off to Brent Jennings. Maxwell out on him. It's Colise. Three-point threat himself. And there's another three-point threat. Allman being defended there by Osi. Allman takes it into the lane. Kicks out to Clayton. And again, Clayton just can't find the range. But a good job getting the rebound by the Magic. Colise slashing through the paint. And he'll draw the foul. And a great job by Colise. I mean, that was a... That was tailor-made for him to pop another one. He's three for three on the night from the line, but he saw that that uh, check, uh, the sketchy closeout a little bit from the storm and danced into the lane and got hammered. That's the third foul on Devon Maxwell. That'll send Kalise to the line. Kalise, nine points on the night. This is his first trip to the free throw line. And he hits the first. As smooth a release as you will see in this league from number two, Jason Caliste. Absolutely. Goes through his ritual. He likes to swing that ball around his hips a few times. Looking to go two for two from the line, and he is. So his first trip to the line, a good one as Caliste goes two for two and extends the lead now to 19, 91-72. Osi gives it to Stringer. Stringer zigs and zags his way. Shot's no good, and a nice job by Jennings to grab that rebound. And there's Taylor again, changing another shot down low. Even if he doesn't get the block, he's changing shots down there with that presence. Brent Jennings, Anderson out on him. Jennings goes to the right, steps back. Shot no good. Anderson grabs the rebound and puts it into the hands of Andre Stringer. The native of Jackson, Mississippi, who attended Louisiana State University, gets it right back. Stringer. Away from the play, Devon Maxwell goes down to the floor. Play carries right on. Stringer sees the opening and drains the three from Summerside. Yeah, you can't give him anything when he's feeling it a little bit. And he's got that feel there now. His first game back, had a little break there. Went back home to uh, to the States to be with the family. To be with the family after a tragic death. And welcome, welcome sight to have him back for Island. And I know the magic condolences went to him. And now he's... He's doing a job from the three-point line in the game here. So a couple of big men coming back into the game. Jeremy Williams onto the floor now for the Moncton Magic. And Jerry and Henry, all six foot ten of them back into the contest for the Island Storm. NBL fans, of course, familiar with Jerry and Henry. Started the year with the St. John's Edge in a three-team trade recently. And uh, by all accounts, kind of benefiting all three. Yeah, absolutely. He was playing well up there. And as Corey Allman... Comes around a screen and nails a rainbow jumper. Yeah, he was playing well there. Just, you know, the, the minutes on a, on a deep squad up front there in St. John's, the minutes were being meted out to him, and he wasn't getting as many. And they uh, they determined they could get something back for him, and they certainly did in Russell Bird from KW. 
And Stringer and Osi not on the same page there as Osi throws it into the crowd. 8-13 left to play in the fourth quarter. The Moncton Magic have bent, but they have not yet broken underneath some of this comeback pressure from the storm. Corey Allman steps up from downtown, and again, his long distance <laughs> bill is going to be a high one because he's calling back to D.C. again, saying, look what the sniper got for you. Somebody's got his eye on the crowd. He wants a phone call from them after the game, too. <laughs> Bit of communication there between Coach Salerno and Corey Allman, and they knew right away. All, all Coach Cor had to say was Corey, Corey and Corey yeah. said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know what I did. Anthony Cox will come back into the game now, and Denzel Taylor. And you know, Denzel Taylor, whenever he's in, his minutes always seem to be valuable minutes for this Magic team. Absolutely, on the defensive end of the floor. If he's playing 10 minutes, he does 10 things to help at the defensive end of the floor. And sometimes, look, sometimes that, that one thing is a foul. Sometimes you got to take, and in that situation, Corey made a bit of a mental error at the top, didn't, uh, didn't hedge on the, uh, on the screen properly, and he knew it right away. And in that situation, as a big guy down low, your job is to take that foul and make him make the shots at the line. Well, if you look at some of the st uh, stats with 7.49 to go in the fourth quarter, field goal percentage, a number of shots put up very close. The Moncton Magic, 34 of 74 for 45.9%. The Island Storm, 32 of 73 for 43.8%. But lots of other things going on. But right now, the big glaring difference and the big positive for the Moncton Magic in this game, and perhaps the main difference on the scoreboard, they are 15 of 35 for 42.9%. That's 45 points off of the three ball. And the Island Storm, only 7 of 18 for 38.9. So a 24-point differential just in three-point shooting. And if you look at the, at the free throw measure, too, I mean, Island came in as the worst shooting free throw team in the league at under 70%, the only one under 70. And tonight it's at four for 13, which is positively ugly. And, and even, uh, even though they don't shoot the ball well from there, there are certain guys that depend on their game to get off by getting to that line, and Franklin Session being one of them, and tonight he's only one for four, and he's 10th in the league at getting to the line, and that's something that the Magic have limited it at him, at him at really well tonight. And on the other side of the spectrum, the Moncton Magic shooting very well from the free throw line, 13 of 16 for 81.3%. That's a fair sight higher than their 76.1 free throw percentage on the year. And Frank, and Chris uh, Johnson is uh, is the is one of the guys that gets the, the that gets to the line a lot and shoots a really good percentage for them at over 80, almost 85%. So that presence again, Chris Johnson out of the lineup tonight with an illness for Island, and you really and they're really feeling it. And this fourth quarter lead's been pushed to 21 points with 7:30 on the clock. That last shot from Andre Stringer for the Storm in and out, and he shook his head the whole way back up the court. Lob inside for Cox. Cox underneath the basket, and the Mega Man powers it home with a Mega Jam. I saw that jam coming as soon as that ball was in the air. Anthony just had that angle, had that man on his hip, and jammed it home. Tyler Scott, little step back shot, no good, and Kaliste will bring that ball up the floor now. 7.05 to go. And the lead has ballooned back to 23. Jeremy Williams puts it on the floor, steps around Anderson. Williams all the way in, a little too deep as he couldn't get the awkward shot from up underneath the basket. And now Osi will bring it up now for the Storm. Over to Stringer. Coach Salerno felt that Jeremy got bumped. Looked to me like he just got a little bit deep. Osi. Clayton trying to wave his wand in his face there, swirling the hand right in the grill of Osi. And Jerry and Henry spins around, and look at Jeremy Williams manhandle that rebound, and they're going to call jump ball. Yeah, Jerry and Henry did a good job of getting the ball, getting his hands on him. Jeremy came, went up and came down with it. But Jerry and Henry created the tie-up, but the ball's going to stay with the Magic. So possession arrow with Moncton. 23-point advantage as the Moncton Magic now almost at the century mark in points. Clayton inside to Jeremy Williams. Chris Anderson watches him. Nice bounce pass inside. And Clayton, contorting his body, almost pretzel-like, gets the shot to go. Nice finish from Marquise. And that's twice now they've gotten them with that kind of circle, kind of a fake UCLA cut up top for the point guard. And he just circles around to the rim. And Andre Stringer again, just he's pure from that three-point strike. Well, the Jackson, Mississippi native, smooth as a running river right there. 
Williams to Quayton. Marquise gets it off to Williams. Williams steps back, puts up the shot. That's no good. Jerry and Henry gobbles up that rebound, and he'll bring it up the floor and gives it off to Kemi Osi. Osi, little help there from Henry. He'll give it off to Henry now. Puts it on the floor. He goes up against Cox. Spins away. Anderson open for the jump shot, and Anderson hits that one with nobody around him. Well, pretty promising going forward for you Island fans about the game that Chris Anderson has had. You know, obviously he's got some game to him. He can knock down that Jimmy a little bit and gets his feet set and out of follow dunks. He's got some explosiveness. So as he gets more than one practice under his belt, there's some promise there for the Island in the front court for sure. Well, checking into the game for the first time tonight, number three for the Storm, Trinity Burdine, native of Reading, Pennsylvania, attended Holland College over in Prince Edward Island. Marquise Clayton spins around, contorting his body again, tried to get his own rebound and put the shot up. And the great effort from Marquise Clayton. And a popular one, the, the bench hopped up and was all over him for that effort, using that screen and roll properly and that second effort too. Now, 5'10 is a lifetime in the NBL, but how much right now do you think that Coach Joe Salerno and the Magic are just looking at that clock saying, wind down, my friend, wind down, because this will be a big emotional victory if they can hold on. Well, I think that he's going to try to parse out the minutes in such a way here that he doesn't have to put on uh, guys like Double A or Terry or Al if he can help it. So he's looking for this squad here to do a job defensively in this last 5-10 that he doesn't have to get nervous and, and go to those guys. So Jerry and Henry out of the game. Brad States into the contest. And Brad States, one of those guys that can kind of be a momentum switcher. So we'll see if he can get some energy going here for the Storm. He gives it off to Burdine. Now O.C. O.C. tries to get Williams to commit, decides to step back. That shot just off to the left. And there's States with the rebound. Gets it to Burdine. His shot was too weak. And Kaliste with the rebound for the Magic. Jason Kaliste, underneath pressure there from Burdine, whips it over to Marquise Clayton. Clayton steps in, thought about the shot, gives it to Allman instead. Corey Allman, and now he's got the double phone out. And I don't know who he's calling, but he's in a talkative mood tonight, he's and he can drain it from outside. I can't tell if he's talking on a landline or a cell phone, but it doesn't matter. It's all working for Corey here from the three-point line. Anthony Cox lost the handle on the rebound. Tyler Scott steps up and hits from the corner. Nice look there from number two, Tyler Scott. That is such a pretty looking jumper. Clay Thompson-esque, that release that he's got, high release, so pretty. Jeremy Williams, perimeter ball movement now by the Magic. Kalise steps back, fake the shot, dumps it inside to Williams. Cross court to Clayton who steps back and Marquise Clayton Gets in, gives himself the old cowboy pat on the hip. And Jeremy Williams really unselfish there. He had a smaller guy on his back, but he had, a, he had his partner wide open. Ball comes down into the hands of Williams after that long three ball was missed by the Island Storm. 3.30 to go here. The Moncton Magic looking to get their second victory on the year. And here's again, Corey Allman. <laughs> I'm going to give him my cell phone if he wants to make a call now after that. He is hot again. And now he steps up and commits the foul. And they're going to give him the shot. And, it's, and the referee now over talking to Coach Joe Salerno. That's a bit of a, that's a, bit of a questionable one. We'll, We'll give the refs a pass on that one, but that seemed to be a foul well before the attempt going up. But fans, stick with us, stick with us here after the game because we're going to have a chat with the Magic player of the game, and we're going to be sort of making a decision on who that's going to be here coming up. I got a, we got two really solid candidates for that one, uh, but also uh, turn the channel when we're done here too. Go find the uh, KW Titans uh, feed, okay, and go to them and watch that game that's going on elsewhere in the NBLC tonight as they approach halftime in Kitchener-Waterloo. It's the Cape Breton Highlanders 61 and KW 58. So a high score and entertaining matchup by the sounds of things out there as we wind down here. And Matt Boyle and the referee and Coach Joe Slater were still chatting while those shots were being put up. So 111-83, it's still a pretty comfortable lead for the Magic here with three minutes left on the clock in quarter four. 
Well, here is the three ball man himself getting it to Kalist. Kevin Farrell Thomas seeing some action now, and Farrell Thomas making his presence felt with the nice spin <laughs> move in the paint. And that's a popular hoop by the Canadian in this building. Listen, the Magic are deep. He's the 12th guy. He's deep on the bench for these guys. But look, look at that solid move by him. Kenny Osi with a three ball of his own. 113-86, the Moncton Magic. Not a lot of teams in this league have a 12th guy that you can throw the ball down low to and have him make such a pretty move like that. Marquise Clayton took it strong to the bucket, couldn't get the shot to go. And Tyler Scott does a nice job of getting that ball away from Corey Allman. Here's Brad States going up against Jeremy Williams, and Williams right there defensively. And Brad States, again, he can, he can make that work for him. He's pretty strong when he decides to take it into the paint and drive the lane. He, he can. That was a good Euro step, too. You don't see that from big guys a lot, but Jeremy Williams with the active hands. Here's Doot Doot now, another former UPEI Panther, seeing some action here. The big man from Ottawa, Ontario. And Kaliste couldn't get that one to drop in states. Flies in, grabs the rebound, gets it to Tyler Scott. And there's a nice combination. One former UPI Panther to another. States to Tyler Scott. And Tyler Scott with the finish. 113.88, 1.45 to go. And anything can happen in this league, but it would be shocking right now if the Moncton Magic didn't yeah. improve their record to 12 and 11 and get a very emotional and psychologically important victory over the Island Storm. Uh, we're going to call this lead safe, I think, and Magic will be 12 and 11 going into a Saturday night matchup here that we'll be on the call for against the division leading Halifax Hurricanes. OC underneath had it go off the underside of the rim. Jeremy Williams back the other way, gets it to Corey Allman, did a good job to keep it alive. And when I guess when you're up big late in the game, you can laugh at a turnover. 112 to go here, just playing out the string. Tyler Scott will bring it up the floor. And again, just a reminder, you just mentioned it, but we will be back on the air with you Saturday night from right here at the Moncton Coliseum, 7 o'clock Atlantic time as Burdine misses from deep. And the Magic will be playing the Halifax Hurricanes for the first time at home. Well, we got a couple of candidates, perhaps, for the player of the game. And in my books, it was the hot outside shooting of Brent Jennings that kind of turned things around and got the magic going uh, a long way to getting this 32 yeah. seconds away from being a victory. I mean, it could easily go in my books with certainly Corey Allman, who got hot down the stretch. But for my money, when Brent Jennings came in and started heating up from the outside, that was a real momentum turner yeah, for the Moncton Magic. Carried him offensively for a while, and so did Corey. And Corey was really valuable at the defensive end of the floor tonight as well. Part of the reason that Frank Session had a tough night on that end of the floor for the Island. But the fans, it's a pretty good crowd in here tonight. Fans, and I know on the sometimes in the live feed, we get a lot of uh, feedback that uh, don't see a big crowd, but when you're seeing it on the live stream, you're seeing the opposite side of the of the uh, of the Coliseum that is a lot emptier. The season ticket holders are behind us. There's a good and it's shot. A pretty it's good. It's a pretty good crowd here tonight. They're getting loud here as the Magic register their 12th win of the year. So the final few seconds will tick away. The players will shake hands. And the Moncton Magic return home after a long, grueling road trip and get perhaps their most emotional victory of the year in terms of what it means to them psychologically to beat a team that to this point pretty much had their number. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, it's a big psychological thing. It's kind of a monk. We talked about it in the pregame, a little monkey off your back type situation when you got a division rival that seems to have your number and you get that. You get that little extra kick where you, okay, let's let's go out and take care of these things. These guys are kind of walking all over us a little bit. And they did that tonight. And you can see that little extra extra step of intensity uh, on the defensive end. They just had that little extra kick. And sometimes you get that. It's a, it's a natural human thing. It's not that they haven't been playing hard previous games. It's just you have that extra bit of motivation. And sometimes that plays out. It sure did at the defensive end tonight for the Magic. Well, the Moncton Magic, as they've started doing and they've continued to do all season long, gather at the logo 
at center court and have a little huddle and then salute the fans. But again, listen, every win in this league is an important one, but certainly for the Moncton Magic to come out here tonight after that long road trip and to be able to hold the Island Storm to only 88 points while putting up 113 themselves, a very big win in terms of psychologically what this can do for this team because no matter what they do against other teams in the league, if they still are in a situation where they can't beat one particular team, in this case the Island Storm, it's always in the back of your mind, yeah, but, yeah, but. I think tonight they, did a, they went a long way, at least in terms of playing the Island Storm, in taking care of the yeah, but. And also a few, uh, as recently as six, seven games ago, Island was in first place in the standings. They've had a tough stretch lately, and they've dropped back now to fourth, but that's right behind that when you're when it's a third, fourth place matchup, and that's, you know, um, play, you're talking about playoff positioning now. It's over a half the season's gone for the for Moncton, and uh, you got to start thinking about playoff positioning, and they've certainly got that on their minds, and this goes a long way. And, and you look at the stats here for Island tonight, and the Franklin Session stuff sticks out, and that's why I had Corey on my list of potential players of the game. He did such a good job on him defensively, along with other guys, but he was the primary matchup and controlled him. When he, when uh, Franklin comes away with, I mean, eight, eight rebounds and seven assists, he's got a good floor game, but, I mean, they depended him for scoring, and he only had seven tonight. And also they did a great job in Devon Maxwell. 14 points on seven for 19. It's not the efficient night that he's used to. Andre Stringer, leading scorer for the Island Storm on the night with 19 points. And for the Moncton Magic, well, it was... A very good night offensively all the way around. Corey Allman had 21. He was 6 of 10 from three-point range. Brent Jennings was 6 of 8, and he led all scorers with 24. So, again, a big win for the Moncton Magic. It's been a tough stretch for Tim Kendrick and the Island Storm, but they'll regroup. They've got good personnel in place. They'll be back. You know that for sure. But, again, for the Moncton Magic, a nice way to return home, a very solid win all the way around. I'm sure a lot for Coach Joe Salerno and the staff to be happy about as they break down film over the next couple of days. And now they've got to turn around and get ready for a very tough opponent with the Halifax Hurricanes and coming in here Saturday. And the thing that's and the thing that the thing about Halifax, the thing about these top three teams on this side, I think you've got three of the, if not the, best three defensive teams in the entire league in the top three spots on the Atlantic Division side in St. John, Halifax, and Moncton. So this Halifax matchup coming in here on Saturday. That should be much more of a defensive struggle. And so the Magic have to know they have to bring that level of intensity here on Saturday night or else this isn't going to be a similar uh, score line when you're talking about the Halifax Hurricanes coming in here. Well, it's interesting because when I was talking to Joe Salerno on the Magic Time podcast the other day, you can find the link to that on my Twitter account, at J-O-H-S-C-O, at Josco. He said he feels that the biggest win that this team has had all year in terms of how the game went, the ebb and flow, and, and gut check time, gutting out the win was against the Hurricanes in Halifax. So you know that as big as this win is, Joe Salerno and the Moncton Magic are, wanna, are gonna wanna come back on Saturday and make another statement against, as you said, a division leader. Yeah, and one that, that boasts, is, a, is it's kinda completely different from this Island side. That's a contrast. Island is so strong in the backcourt and uh, Halifax offers such a challenge with that huge and nasty and terrifying front court that they have on the on both on the defensive end from a toughness perspective and the offensive end where they can score inside and out well that wraps up things for me here this evening once again your final score from the Moncton Coliseum a big victory on home court after returning from the long road trip as the Moncton Magic defeat their nemesis the Island Storm by a score of 1 88 I'm Scott Squires and on behalf of myself and my broadcast partner, Dave Tingley. I want to wish you a very good evening. Have a great night. We will see you again on Saturday. I will step aside, and in just moments, David will speak to the Moncton Magic player of the game. But for me, it's good night from the Coliseum. <laughs>